I'm Sarah. I'm from Nettlewood Flowers and um, I grow flowers on a small scale just outside of Lewis in East Sussex. And here we have... Hello everybody, I'm Frida from London. I'm, I'm a small scale flower farmer and a florist. Um, I'm growing on a, just over a quarter of an acre down here. I do have some room to expand, but we're going to see how it goes. Um, and I've been growing flowers now for, well, this is coming into my fifth season. Um, so yeah, it feels like a long time, but actually it's not. <laughs> I still feel quite new at this. Um, to an extent. But I was very lucky early on when I first started growing flowers um, to meet some amazingly talented florists. And they really informed um, what I grow um, and how I grow it uh, and, and what I supply to them. And one of those florists, of course, was Frida. And I think Frida and I met Probably about five years, maybe yeah, five years ago, when I was working as a florist uh, in a shop in Chelsea and Frida came in to buy some amazing uh, British flowers uh, that we actually had there at the time. And um, yeah, and it all went from there. Yes, yes, I know. And then I guess uh, that you gave me like tulips, right? I love yeah. tulips. Yeah, I think that's the first thing I sold you with 10 Bella Pop tulips. I'd only grown 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, got really shocked because it's so beautiful color-wise, shape-wise and texture-wise. And then I text to her, can I have 100 for next year? And I didn't have any plan to where I'm going to use it. Just I wanted to have 100 stamps. <laughs> that was my first uh, flowers from her. And, and I think from there, our conversation develops. Um, and Frida, I think, has been very clear about uh, the colours that she wanted to use back then, uh, the shapes and textures. And it'd be really good to hear from you, Frida, about how you think about colour and, and indeed how that's now changing um, as we're going forward through this very interesting time. Yes, I guess colours always important to me, colours and textures and shapes. I guess it probably is from previous my uh, work. I used to make a custom jewelry like this one, and then we always use the different materials and then combine together. And then the color is very important. I think for me, colors, I can say emotions. So when you see from distance, which color, when you look at it, make very classic, happy, or someone can make a little deeper. And then that's why color is very important to me. And then the other one is texture. Texture can make a whole flower design because the softness, the roughness, like all different fluffiness. So when you're adding something different one, I guess we can deliver a completely different designs. And then I guess you know more than me now, I guess the shape of flowers. Mm -hmm. So I love your flowers because very healthy and mm -hmm. then it's not regular. They're giving all different shapes, dependent on or probably wind. And then yeah. that makes me, I guess, I really feel grateful uh, having met you in uh, really early my flower journey. It's like I'm six years uh, experienced florist. I met yeah. you five years ago. So I guess I realized your flower made me much better florist. So that means, I guess, all the growers, and then you have ability to inspire and influence all the florists. And I think that, that works both ways, because I think early on, some of the colors that you were asking for were not colors that, that I, I necessarily would have been growing a lot of. You know, the ivories, the beige, the brown. And you were very clear that actually that's what you wanted. Um, and so I planted lots and lots and lots of phlox, cranberry, <laughs> and little brown sunflowers, double dandy, et cetera, things like that um, to meet that requirement. Um, and it was, it was by growing those flowers and then having you use them, lots of florists started to come to me saying, oh, my God, I want, I want those flowers that Fried is using. So, so that was great for my business as well. No, it's, I guess we all want, but yeah. I guess it was you gave a chance to me, which one I have in my mind, like a little sandish, the colors. Yeah. And then I can just ask, even I don't know the name of flowers. Can I have a beige? Can I have yeah. a slightly darker 
brown one? Can I have middle yeah. colors? And can I have a blackish, reddish? I just give the, the like, colors. And then yeah. it helps a lot because it's already I have a full shade of color. It's so easy for us to work out. And then yeah. your flowers is really perfect really perfect for events and weddings and yeah. romance so yeah. your like a, your field romance is coming to us so it was really great yes yeah i must admit you tested my botanical knowledge on occasion though so i, I quite often get a text of a flower or a leaf or a bit of a twig <laughs> <laughs> saying what is it and can i have this next year <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, like when I see something closed in a park or somebody's garden or in magazine, I have no idea. I'm just sending messages like, yeah. Sarah, yeah. what is this one? Can I have this one? Can I have that one? And then the other one, you always ask to me, what do you want to have next year? Probably around October? Yeah, yeah, September, October time. We always have that conversation about, What's the next year looking like? You know, what events have you got coming up and what sort of colours and shape and feel are you going for? Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's really helpful for me because I can then plan what to grow um, and when I need to have things available for you. Um, and it works right across my business because then I also have those things, some of those things, if you don't take them all, which sometimes I get... <laughs> Doris, I can't take them all. And then I think, so, I guess, last year we talked about and then I guess it's really good for me too. I guess I use the really beautiful, like a little toner color a lot. Yeah. And then this year we talk about last October about the little more bluish color. Yeah. yeah. I think it's perfect for this pandemic too. If we use a more brighter, happy color to yeah. give the little happiness. And then I guess it's amazing for this year. Very lots and lots of bluish flowers this yeah. year. <laughs> not gray and yellow which is the pantone colors of the year but anyway i guess we creative ourselves our yeah. own colors yes pantone is the first overall world like yeah. the year of the color but i guess yeah. florist world is quite different so which yeah. one we didn't use a lot and this year we want to use a lot probably next year I'm going to ask, probably a lot of florists are going to ask, but a lot of yellow colour, who knows? Oh, yes, yes, that would be great. I love yellow. Yeah. So great. <laughs> There's lots and lots of yellow flowers. I think the other thing that has been great uh, working with florists like you is you're not afraid of those bendy stems or if things aren't perfect. Um, whereas I think there, are, sadly, there are still quite a lot of florists around who, if everything doesn't look straight and uniform, they're, they're, they're quite afraid of using it. Whereas you embrace that. I guess even when I was a costume jewelry designer, my earring was, a lot of them is, was like an unbalanced one. I mm -hmm. think as, I guess, grown like from the Asia, like we always love and respect of asymmetrical spaces, negative spaces. Yeah. And then we know it's so hard to find like a um, perfectly beautiful shape. So yeah. beauty of imperfection, I guess that is the maybe main beauty from the nature, I think. And that's what I love, the beauty in imperfection. I, yeah. I, can, I can provide lots of imperfect blooms to... <laughs> It's amazing. Yes, please. <laughs> and so last week um, I delivered <laughs> some flowers to you, which obviously are very thin on the ground um, at this at this time, uh, being so early in the season. So I bought up some euphorbia and some different hellebores and then lots of branches, which is the other thing that you often ask me for. Uh, so I think you got some hornbeam and oak and some mm -hmm. apple covered in lichen um, and I think you created something wonderful with the flowers that I bought up along with some other British flowers and we're going to go on now and have a look at you creating an amazing installation. Thank you, I hope you like it. <laughs> Thank <All> you. Right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you. 
It was lovely to chat with Sarah. Thank you so much. I really enjoy that. As discussed, we create beauty together, and I learn a lot from her. Now, I will create an installation with the seasonal materials which I received this morning from Sarah. As you can hopefully tell, these are absolutely gorgeous branches. You can see apple, hornbeam, and oak, as well as some amazing mosses. I really love mosses. I also have some local tulips. To be honest, it is quite challenging as I am working with the materials that just arrived. I will actually improvise based on these beautiful materials. The inspiration comes from nature, more specifically when winter transitions into spring. My intention is to make a very loose design to showcase the beauty of every single branch as well as make negative spaces. To me, it feels like the branches are holding hands and balancing themselves. These naked branches carry hope for spring and the future. I'm happy with the shape of structures. It feels very airy, dynamic, and free, almost flowing. Now, I will place flowers on the branches to visualize the seasonal transition and bring it to life. I will also place more flowers in lower area to make the connection with the soil as the source of life.
Finally, put most around and on the installation, for me, they symbolize the strengths, magic of nature. They connect heaven and earth. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Thank you. This arrangement is from previous insulation bucket side and then tulips from Smith & Manson is beautiful pinky peachy, very delicious color. My second demo is inspired by Ikebana. As you know, Ikebana is a Japanese floral art. I have been studying Ikebana last three years. For me, Ikebana is like a companion for my flower journey. Today, I will make a small bowl arrangement with beautiful euphorbia and hello bruce from nettled flowers. For Ikebana, choosing right material, right container, vessel is very important. So when I look at this wooden bowl, I think it material-wise it goes really well with the wooden bowl. So when I start the uh, arrangement, normally it depends on material, but I'm starting with quite longer stem because that means I'm telling you first how much I'm gonna extend from the space and then from the container. So I will use this little curvy little stems first and then I don't use water for this demonstration but the reality of course we have to use the water that is sure. This helibris is really beautiful, like a little bell. I will go here. And when you make arrangement, let's think about the dimensions and then overall, all around the view too. Height-wise, stems, some of them can go really high, some of them can go very short. And then face direction, you can make a friend. Somebody is calling, somebody can respond from the other side too. Why I like this Helebrus and then Euphobia? It's green, but this one has all the shade, very light green to a little darker, and then kind of blackish. So in this one, we don't need many different variety of material. Today I use the Kenzen pin holder, but I get the Kenzen container. You can use a chicken wire, some twig, and then whatever you feel is right, I guess you can use it. So overall, I guess I can see some spaces. So I can finish it sometimes like that, it feels right. For my view, like there is no right, no wrong. If it feels right, I guess you can finish the moment. And then let's see. Here, if you want to make dimensions, first here you can see, and then another layer see here, and then another layer here. So there's a little layer to make extension dimensions, but I think we can put one more here to finish. It's first time I'm using this euphobia, but I really like it. Very pretty. I can finish like this because I can see spaces and then uh, depths too. And then just two material gives a really good feeling of arrangement. 
And then I got these leaves from Hellebrus. It's kind of really dark, so I want to use finishing touch as finishing touch, like a little contrast. Okay, I will finish like this. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Bye. This has been a real honor. Thank you so much for having me here. I hope you enjoyed my demonstration and please grow many many beautiful flowers. Take care.